Do you feel it yet, America? Do you feel the chill in the air? When you walk down the street, do you hear the crunch of the leaves underneath your boots? Have you started going into your closet and pulling out your favorite hoodie? Oh, getting it ready. Have you woken up and needed a hot treat to get your bones warm? Because it's getting a little bit chillier. Have you started to know, notice a return? of our favorite orange friends to everybody's stoops? Have you started to see the kids preparing to become ghosts and goblins asking for chocolate? Did you guys know that Democrats control the weather now? Yeah! And what are the Democrats doing with all this weather control? Oh, oh, they're sending hurricanes to Florida? Hurricanes to, that's never happened before. Florida's never had a hurricane in October before. No, that Florida's never had a hurricane during hurricane season. Florida has never been known for having hurricanes. Florida has never been considered hurricane prone. Are you talking about Florida, home of the University of Mi Miami hurricanes? That Florida? Well, the only way that could have happened was with a hurricane gun and maybe a laser, right? It's enough to make you have a Pearl Manic episode. Come on now. Pearl Mania, Pearl Mania, Pearl Mania, Pearl Mania 500. I'm going to tell you one thing right now, though. It is currently 79 degrees in... <laughs> Philadelphia, which means I'm wearing this hoodie as a bit because climate has changed. Hoodie season doesn't start till November now, all right? That's just where we are. Anyway, hurricanes Helene and Milton. Presidents get blamed for the weather. I know, it seems unfair, but it is it's not a new thing to be blaming leaders for the weather. In fact, if you go back to like ancient kings and monarchies, they were being blamed for the weather all the time. It was about whether or not they had the mandate of heaven or the appeal of God, right? If you had an ancient king and you had a drought or maybe a flood or something else, the villagers and the other nobles and elites would think that maybe this was God's way of telling them that, hey, this guy, with the crown, not so good. Maybe we get us a new guy with a new crown. That folk belief or primordial belief that's been trapped back there is still in our brains to this day. In fact, if you have a president that has too many hurricanes happen or maybe a big earthquake or a drought or COVID, I don't know, all sorts of different stuff, a plague, any of these things could have a major effect on how voters see that president and whether or not like the universe is trying to tell us something, right? I would argue the universe is telling you not to vote for the guy with 34 felony convictions who's been criminally found liable of sexual assault. The dude who's constantly screaming he's gonna throw a bunch of people in camps and just saying Nazi shit. I think that's a sign, but that's just me. Now let's take some science and sprinkle that in with some of those old like monarchy thoughts that we had back in the olden days, right? Science these days has shown us repeatedly that climate change is real. As I showed you at the beginning of the video, 79 degrees on October 13th as I'm recording this video. The policies of both the major political parties in America though have been greatly affected by climate change. With Democrats since Al Gore stating that climate change is real and we should do something to mitigate about it and Republicans running on the ticket uh shut the fuck up liberal I'm sick y'all trying to take my truck away hey what call roll a motherfucker burr, burr, burr. <laughs> So often in a lot of these arguments, Democrats will show up with a lot of facts, data, you know, boring nerd shit, while Republicans will step forward and just say, these guys are boring nerds. Get those nerds! Nerd! Nerd! And that used to work. In fact, that worked for like 20 years on so many different things. A guy one time held up a snowball and said, it snowed, therefore no. But climate change has gotten worse and even... This month alone, we had the hurricanes Helene and Milton hit different areas of the United States after years of other hurricanes and wildfires and worsening climate and conditions have been erupting all across America and the world. Y'all remember when Australia was on fire? What about last year when Canada was on fire? What about Hawaii being on fire? What about Greece being on fire? A lot of stuff has been on fire recently. In fuego! With evidence like this being directly in front of the voters' eyes and ears, and some cases nostrils, the Republican Party has turned to a tried and true method to deny climate change by claiming it's not actually climate change. That's right, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and others have stepped forward with wild conspiracy theories that have stated things like hurricanes and wildfires have been started by lasers or satellites 
or other things. They recently claimed that Hurricane Helene, when it hit Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, and Northern Georgia, that that was aimed in some sort of way. As you look as it cuts, cuts through red counties, that it hit the deep south. They point to deep red Florida being run by Governor Ron DeSantis, who is a Republican, and saying, look, look at how these hurricanes are hitting these red areas. In fact, if you go back a little bit further, they would have claimed that these same hurricanes would hit these areas because of gay marriage or because of other things and that God was mad. Now, instead, since they know that no longer works as an argument, they're claiming that science that doesn't exist can be used to target Republicans. And then in fact, we need to continue to keep driving big trucks and dumping carbon in the air from big old cruise ships because that's what the Democrats don't want us to do. Therefore, it must be working and it must be a way to stop these big hurricanes. I don't know. I'm not saying that they're dumb people. I'm just saying that they're they're idiots. But in one way, they aren't idiots, which is that claiming and having insane conspiracy theories like this show up in our discourse, comment sections, and videos turns people off from wanting to have a conversation about climate change, right? If you and I started talking and you're like, hey, you know, I just noticed that like, it's weird that hoodie season is in November now. And I start yelling, that's because George Soros uses lasers to make sure Halloween's costumes are sexy, then you would uh, probably stop talking to me, but you'd also probably be nervous to find out that any of your other friends think that same thing, so you just don't bring it up anymore. And before you know it, it's 20 years later and we don't have New Orleans anymore. Basically, my point is this, by filling the air with conspiracy theories, there isn't any air for actual ideas on how to make the world better, how to mitigate this, how to get past all of the changes that are happening to us, and to make sure that the horrible weather that's happening doesn't hurt as much next time. But instead, we get both sides are bad, which means vote Republican. Burr, burr, burr.